By the time you get to this position here where you're going to evaluate it, like toe to the sky, mm -hmm. right? We always kind of tell people like, this generally is going to make it go to the right. Mm -hmm. This is going to make it go to the left. Okay, mate, through impact, let's talk about hand path and the direction that we would like to see it move for someone who tends to have the opposite, the big over the top, everything's going left, coupled with a few other body movements that we won't talk about in this session, but they're not <laughs> gonna help. Now, through the ball, and we wanna achieve hopefully something like that, it was probably the best shot of the day. Yeah. Now, for a lot of players that do get this over the top movement, the handle kind of throws out, the club and everything goes left, they need to, to a degree, shift their direction of their swing. So not just their path, the whole direction of the arc out to the right. Exactly. And for a lot of players, they might have been working on connection or something similar. And it feels very foreign to let this golf club almost feel like it moves away from us through that impact zone. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes what we feel like we need to do, you know, is not actually what yeah. the fix, right? Sometimes yeah. it's the opposite. Yeah. Um, and so would you like to see the drill for it? I would love it. Okay, mate, it. we'll slide this ball in here. We call this the V drill. So what we're going to do, normally, you know, you might be inclined to want to aim to the right to get a feeling of swinging right, but we're going to do it the opposite way. Okay. We're actually going to get you aiming left. Okay. So I'm going to throw these sticks down. Mm -hmm. One, I'm going to aim to the right of the target and one I'm gonna to aim to the left of the target. Okay, and you're gonna take your setup, this is just gonna be like a sort of a half swing, waist high, waist high. You're so, gonna aim with this stick here. So your body's gonna aim left, yeah. Ball's gonna be back in your stance. Mm -hmm. You are gonna square up your shoulders though, so keep your shoulders square. Yep, okay. good. Face should be aiming. Everything at the target. Okay, great. Okay. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna swing on the way down with the white stick. So you'll make kind of, a, a, let's call it a normal-ish backswing. Mm -hmm. Now your focus is gonna be swinging with the, the white stick. So you're gonna be pretty close to your right thigh, your mm -hmm. trail thigh in here. And then you're gonna feel on the way through like your hands are really getting away from that lead hip. Yeah, great. Which the exact opposite of the problem, right? Yeah, so we, we actually see if we were to slow the moment of impact down for a lot of players, we see a lot of them get this sort of chicken wing bunch look, right? And essentially what happens when this occurs is the distance between the end of the handle and the body gets shorter. Exactly. Right? So the radius is getting shorter. Now, the professional golfer, post impact, by the time that the trail arm is about level with the ground, the elbows would be their tightest, so they would be squeezed together, and the distance would be the greatest. Exactly, there's a lot of space right here. There's a lot of space. Now, we can't see that from the down the line view, but if we were to shift on from the face on, the difference between this and then old mate down there that's tucking <laughs> things in nice and close, right. well, straight away you see that face that's not really conducive to speed or accuracy at all. No, for sure. And then if we relate this to any other sport, for simplicity sakes, the moment of impact for tennis, post, distance away, baseball, post, distance away, it is the weight and the force of the object which is propelling speed into the golf ball which is going to send it the distance. Exactly. Yeah, so exactly. if we're not holding on for dear life, right, we can actually allow this golf club to do the work and get the job done. Right. So that feeling specifically that you've detailed here about the end of the handle, which I really like, and I, with this white stick here, a little bit of my OCD kicking in with my white glove, I love it, <laughs> is I'm trying to track that through and out towards the target, yep. rather than this black rod of death over here, which is gonna pull things around. Right, and we've made it a little bit harder for you by aiming your body to the left of the target, mm. but it does enhance that feel of swinging away like you were describing. Yeah, so doing this drill, uh, one thing I'd like you to quickly touch on is like we're getting straight. So this is a proper functional setup for a straight shot. Right. And then all we're doing is shifting the ball back and our feet open. Exactly, yeah. So this stayed where it was. Okay, great. Yep, spot on. Because we don't want players just to start now doing this and then try to go yeah, out. Yeah, because no chance of hitting that solid. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so ball slightly back, but feet are kind of matching that black rod there. Yep. And shoulders and everything are square. Square. And it's just going to be like a waist high, waist high swing so that you can really hold this position here, evaluate it, and really get that feeling of that distance, distance like you were talking about. Now, I love that reference you there made there for the waist high to waist high because there's one thing that when we're trying to exaggerate a sensation 
is that it's time and place for certain exercises. For a lot of players, this is going to inhibit their rotation, or will inhibit their rotation in the backswing. So if you try and make a normal backswing from here, guys, your arms are going to break down the structure. Before you know it, you're back into square one. Yeah. So what Mike's just saying there is just a little half swing here because it's more of the feel through the golf ball of trying to track Spot it on. through. Yeah. Now, one last little thing before I hit this is all about the club face and what that should do through the ball because we don't want to do this, do we? No, <laughs> let's go on this way. <laughs> exactly, that doesn't look very athletic at all, it's hurting me. So, the sensation, if we're gonna do a couple little practice swings here, what should the toe of the golf club be doing? By the time you get to this position here where you're gonna evaluate it, like toe to the sky, mm -hmm. right? We always kind of tell people like, this generally is gonna make it go to the right, mm -hmm. this is gonna make it go to the left. Mm -hmm. For someone that's a slicer, I wouldn't necessarily mind seeing this. Not at all. Right, because it's an overcorrection. Correct. But Let's avoid this right here. Yeah, okay. So I would say, guys, normal setup. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna shift your lower body left and then for the right hander, and you can see my shoulders and my club is still square. Little half to half. Now, when you do this, make sure you use your wrists so we're getting a little bit of flex in our wrists in the backswing because if we do stiff arm Steve and we start tilting like <laughs> this, we're in big trouble, right? So club moves back, feeling the head pass on the way through. And you can see that sensation, especially the visual, of the end of the handle moving further away from my body. So it comes in close, like Mike detailed, and then separating out. Exactly. Great, so let's do it with a ball. You may be in trouble there, let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, good job. All right, so let's have a look at the numbers down here. Club path, 17 to the right. Well, that's never happened to yeah, me in my that's life. A, that's a nice draw hook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we can see uh, the whole swing direction. So just quickly, let's talk about the difference between swing direction and path. Path is at the moment of impact. Direction is the whole arc of the swing. Right. So for example, for simplicity's sakes, if the golf ball is right at the bottom of the golf swing, the club might look like it's coming from the inside, but that would be zero. Mm -hmm. And then coming out around the other side, that would be zero. The further back the ball is in space, the more to the right that path will be naturally due to the arcing motion of a golf swing. But what we're trying to work on here is the swing direction. And that means that the whole arc itself is swinging way out to the right. Yeah. Which is, again, it's an overcorrection, right? Because somebody that is, you know, pulling that handle left, their swing direction is going to be much more to the left. Yeah. So we would see like maybe a negative five plus on yeah. swing direction. Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, like I, I'm a, a big culprit of this is my sequence with my upper body generally gets quite snatching and quick, especially with driver when I'm trying to rip it, goes left and my swing direction can be whoa, about six or seven left. Right? Gotcha. So this is probably a great drill for me. So setting up here, aiming everything to the left, make sure you're using those wrists and those arms, guys. They're nice and soft, secure hold. Then we're feeling like the hand path goes out to the right, toe turns down, I freeze frame that, nice distance away, we can see a little bit of curvature there with that. Now, a couple of interesting things to note, the last one flew 99 meters, that one 87, felt like I put zero effort into it, <laughs> right. like zero effort into it. And that is because when this golf club is moving in an efficient manner from the inside relative to what we're talking about here, it creates this effortless force at the moment of impact. Rather than the opposite, let's say I'm matching my feet with the white line, pulling down with the red, like I would have to swing so hard to get any sort of similar distance there. For sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then once you've done that a few times, start to square up. So then we can move this, this one here to where it's square. Now you're gonna start to try and incorporate that same feel into your regular setup. Yeah, and would you get players just to for this one, I'm gonna hit it, but it's gonna be square. But if I get set up here, just almost just have a little practice swing, getting that feeling, just so they could get the sensation of that distance and separation from the body, then set up and try and recreate that feel a little bit. Absolutely, I mean, the, the more correct reps that you do, the better, right? Mm -hmm. And so in rehearsal swings, practice swings, slower, smaller swings, working your way up to incorporating it in, into a full swing, but then also going back, Yeah. right? Not just, okay, I've done a few of the drills, I got a feel, it's looking good, and then full swing, full swing, full swing. Yeah. Go back to smaller, slower, work your way back in. One of my favorite analogies to use when it comes to learning golf would be very similar to a musical instrument, let's say piano, right? Is that for the life of me, I can't play piano. <laughs> and if I was gonna start, let's say I go twinkle, twinkle, little star. Right. Now, even though I would love to finish and complete twinkle, twinkle, little star, there's no chance in heck that I'm gonna nail it the first time. And what's gonna happen is I'm going to stuff up. Now. 
unlike golf where you get another ball just to try and go again and again and again, mm -hmm. and occasionally hand-eye coordination might help and you will hit a good shot. Right. There is really the barrier to learning a musical instrument is very methodical and slow. Same as learning a manual car, tying your shoelaces, so on and so forth. So slow and intentional is key. So when we're setting up here, now we've got that feeling, really recreating it, just being okay with the toe turning over. Now, swing direction here, mate. So when I swing back and through, one thing that I do get a feeling of is that it naturally makes me want to swing more from the inside to achieve that. Is that okay? I would, it would depend, you know, I would say, again, it depends on kind of what your natural tendencies are. That might be an okay thing during the drill just to get a feel. Mm. Um, and then, you know, just try and incorporate that feel into your normal swing. Yeah, yeah. As a general reference, if we're setting up straight, by the time that we get this golf club, well, let's say the lead arm to level with the ground, just make sure that when you shift from doing this exercise, where it's very hard for me to turn, to this exercise here, that we are turning our chest and our hips. You don't want to just get into a position where you go, yep, yeah, that's fine, and then throw it out. Right, exactly. So still recreating the sensation of chest and hip turn. Now the club is naturally arcing around my body. Let's hit one a little way down there. And straight away, some feelings that I'm getting from doing this drill, like that flew 120, felt like I just love tapped it. <laughs> just Top it. path 15 left, Yeah. swing direction 12 right, is that instantly I can feel my body's kind of squaring off a little bit. Yeah as opposed to the player that would be hugging it around the left, they would be super open like right. this, right? Right. Great. So let's say that we do five reps of the slow one where the feet are aiming left, then we do five reps slow out to the right. Would you then hit a whole bunch of full shots really, really fast until you hit a poor shot and then go back? Or would you be disciplined and go slow, methodical, level it up that way. Yeah, slow, methodical, back and forth. So if you're working on the range, group your balls together. So like you said, like five, five, and you might put another five and five. Right. So that when you do that, you're not just then, okay, boom, dragging them over, smashing, smashing, smashing. Yeah, I love that. Because what you can do in a practice environment is you can start bias and reacting to the previous shot rather than going, okay, the structure of this learning my favorite exercise to give players is you just do exactly what you said, get five balls, hit one normal shot, five short, five balls, one normal shot. Don't fall in the trap of going, hit one good shot and go, I've got it. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's the next thing? Yeah. Shot in the shaft, let's go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna have a little slow rehearsal. Now I'm straight, I'm actually gonna go rehearsal this way, feeling like the hand path going out to the right, aiming straight, hand path out to the right, great. Now blending that into a little bit more of a backswing starting to feel normal already. So let's see the swing direction get right. I'm gonna get that face closing. I'm gonna see a bit of a push draw on this one, I reckon. Started to the right, curved back. We can see the swing direction there, eight degrees to the right, path to the right, face closed. Mate, awesome stuff. Did what you wanted, good job. <laughs>